Hey guys, it's Neil Harrison from White Laws. I'm a third generation owner, been at it for 35 years. Um, in this video, I'm gonna talk about uh, belts. Everybody's got belts. You've got belts in your lawnmower, snowblower. If you're a farmer, you've got it on almost every piece of equipment. If you're none of the above, you probably at least have one in your dryer. So belts are everywhere. They're great until they break and then they're very frustrating, but I'm here to make it a little less frustrating for you tonight. So stick around. We're gonna go over how to identify the belt you have that likely needs replacing, how to uh, troubleshoot the belt you've got, why it broke, and how to make sure you know what you're looking for before you call the parts store to get a new one. So stick with me and we'll go over all those topics tonight. For those that know nothing about belts, I'm gonna give you a little little rundown on how to, some of the terminology I'm gonna use in my video. So there is a, the smaller belts are called three V's and three L's. And these belts are three eighths wide and they have either a shallow angle or a steep angle. So those are the smallest belts that you normally would find on a rototiller, snowblower, lawnmower on the drive. Those are your small belts. Those are called three V's and three L's. Now you get into the more common belt, which is an A belt. This is on everything. It could be on your furnace fan. They could be lawnmower, tractor, you name it. A belts are everywhere. They're half an inch wide and not overly deep. B belts, and you'll, you'll notice all belts have letters. B belts are 5 8 wide and not too steep. You see these on heavier applications. Big, big lawnmowers, tractors, grain elevators. These have higher horsepower so they can drive more stuff. Then you get in to a C belt. C belt is 7 8 wide and a little steeper yet, high, high horsepower. So as you can tell, the more rubber on the belt, the more it can drive. The last major belt that you'll see in the home level is a Kevlar belt. It's green, some people call them Blade Runner belts, but that's really developed for the high RPMs, in the grass all day, that application. Then there's automotive belts. They don't have a, f a special name, they don't use letters, but they are a special V, and you see them on auto, light truck, tow motor, that style of application and they, they usually are made by Gates, Daco, Goodyear, those type of major brands. Worst case scenario, you have no belt. <gasps> Your belt is destroyed, it is gone, it is in the field, it exploded in the snowbank, and you can't find your manual. I bring up the manual because if you have no belt, first thing you wanna to try to find is an OEM number. If you can come up with an OEM number, obviously the dealership could help you or a store like ours could help you. A lot of times the number will cross. If it won't cross and you can't get to an OEM number, we need two pieces of information. We need to know the pulley sizes and the distance between the pulleys, and then we can still come up with a belt for you. As you see the belt shred and disintegrate, all hope is not lost. Give us a shout, we can still help. First thing you really need to figure out is how wide a belt do you have? We've got belts anywhere from a little guy like this, which is three eighths, right up to a belt like this, which is seven eighths. Why that's important is if you've got a belt that is this big and you neglect to tell the store that, and they think you've got a belt that'll fit in this pulley, as you can see, it's not gonna pan out very well. So what you need to do is make sure that the belt that broke is at least the right belt. Because what could happen is you've bought a piece of equipment used and the belt is the wrong belt for the piece of equipment. So if the belt is not sitting in your pulley nice and flush like this, chances are the wrong belt is on the machine. So what you wanna do is make sure that the belt is sitting correctly so when you call into the place, you at least know that the right belt was on the machine the first time, or at least when you acquired it. So there is one exception, a B belt, which is a nice wide belt like this, which is 5 8 fits in a pulley like this. If you're broke down and the machine's got to go, um, especially in an agricultural situation, and you happen to look over at your shelf and you have an A-belt, an A-belt, which is half inch, will still drive in a B pulley. Obviously the size is wrong, but if you needed to get up and running, you can do it. Where it won't work is, like I said before, a B-belt in an A pulley is a big problem. What's gonna happen is it's gonna ride too high and it's gonna destroy the belt. So if you crawl under your lawnmower and you see a belt like this and the inside of it is destroyed and you take a look and the pulley is a nice small pulley, chances are the previous owner or yourself in a uh, situation of panic put the wrong width of belt on and it is destined to fail. 
So there's another tricky one. If it's an OEM belt, the OEMs are starting to make belts that only fit their machines. And somebody like Gates makes Blade Runner belts which are two OE spec. So we got to watch for that when you're calling in to go over your belt. That is the one exception to the rule. Sometimes when you've got a small belt, there is a little slight difference between an A belt, which are on a lot of industrial type equipment and a fan belt off an automotive type so what you got to watch for, usually they're notched on the top, but the V is different. So another reason why your belt may have failed prematurely is the person that owned the machine before could have put an automotive belt on because the store they could get to at the time had one of these, but in fact, it should have always had an A belt. So the wear on the belt will tell you that story. So what we need to know before you call a store or the dealership is the width of the belt, the length of the belt, and the style of the belt. So width, you can take a tape measure, measure the top of the belt. That's no problem. The style of the belt, it could have notches on the inside like this one, which is an X belt, or it could be smooth like a regular belt. So what the difference is, is a notched belt is meant to go around small pulleys and give it a little more grip. So the small pulley, you'll see, see how small that belt can get. That's what the notches are good for. Whereas a standard belt, the pulley size can only be so small. And then the length is the last piece of the puzzle. With the length, the best and easiest way to do it is just take a tape measure, go around your belt and call a store with the outside dimension. What they will do is they will take that information and figure out if you've got an A, B or C belt, which are the different thicknesses and get you the right size based on how many inches that it equals in a belt. Yeah. The last piece of the puzzle is why did my belt fail? And what you need to look for is gouges, cuts, even wear on one side of the belt or an uneven wear on the other side of the belt. What you'll find is a belt that has gouges and cuts, chances are the pulley has a nick in it. So if it's got gouges and cuts, check your pulley. The last thing you want to do is go to all the hassle of figuring out the right new belt and then your pulley destroys it just as fast as the last belt. If it's an even deterioration, there's a good chance that your pulleys are misaligned. So what's happening is the belt is wearing on one side and not the other because the pulleys aren't true to how the manufacturer wanted them to be. So if you see uneven wear, if you see cuts, check your pulleys first. Um, very often we'll get a customer in that says that the belt only lasted three months. And as a lot of consumers right away, it, it must be a product problem. Well, when a belt's breaking in three months, there's a very good chance it's a mechanical issue with the pulley setup. The last, the last piece of the puzzle, which, which is why a belt could break prematurely, is if the machine was supposed to have a Kevlar belt, usually they're green like this one, um, and the customer previously put on a traditional belt. And what happens is Kevlar belts are very good at bending backwards to work with idler pulleys, like on lawnmower decks or so on. And if you put a regular belt on and it has a big angled idler pulley, you'll see really bad wear on the back of the belt, especially if it broke very quickly. That's a good indication that it should have had a Kevlar belt and you want, you want to specify that when you call in. So now we've covered off belts. Thank you for tuning in. I wanted to make sure that everybody had a better idea of how to identify the belt you've got, what could have broke it, and how to call in the proper belt you need for next time. Thanks again for tuning in. We are going to release some more videos on a more regular basis. And if you ever find yourself in uh, Woodstock, Ontario, Canada, please stop by Whitelaws. We'd love to see you.